Now I'm going to read Revelation chapter 12, starting at verse 1. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. So obviously the woman has labor pains because of the consequences of Eve. Continuing, then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. So right, right there, we know this child is Jesus because of the iron rod. Continuing, verse 6, The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God, that there she might be taken care of for 1260 days. This desert is obviously in Egypt. Um, this is when the Holy Family fled to the desert. Verse 7, Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels battled against the dragon. The dragon and its angels fought back. But they did not prevail, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The huge dragon, the ancient serpent, who was called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, was thrown down to earth, and its angels were thrown down with it. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now salvation and power now, now have salvation and power come in the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his anointed. For the accuser of our brothers is cast out, who accuses them before our God day and night. They conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Love for life did not deter them from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great fury, for he knows he has but a short time. When the dragon saw that it had been thrown down to the earth, it pursued the woman who had given birth to a male child. But the woman who was given the two wings of the great eagle so that she could fly to her place in the desert where far from the serpent she was taken care of, of for a year, two years, and a half year. Now obviously this is again a reference back to Revelation chapter 12 verse 6. But this desert is, ob is an obvious reference to Egypt. Then, or the serpent, however, spewed a torrent of water out of his mouth after the woman to sweep her away with the current. But the earth helped the woman and opened its mouth and swallowed the flood that the dragon spewed out of its mouth. Then the dragon became angry with the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who kept God's commandments and bear witness to Jesus. It took its position on the sand of the sea. We can see from all of the symbolism and imagery in Revelation chapter 12 that this undeniably, in its first and literal sense, refers to Mary. Also, remember how Mary is referred to as a woman prophetically in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 and also by Jesus in John chapter 19 verse 26. Also, no one denies that the devil, Jesus, and the archangel Michael are real people. So why wouldn't the woman also be a real woman, i.e. Mary? It also seems very clear that the woman has the moon under her feet and on her head a crown of 12 stars. This means that the woman has a physical body. Why is this important? Remember that the body itself is corrupt and corruption cannot enter perfection itself. Romans chapter 8 verse 10 quote, But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. Now remember that Mary was preserved from the stain of original sin. I'm tying this back to the Immaculate Conception. So her body um, is not did not suffer the consequences of sin, and this was due to God alone and not her own merit. When people die, their bodies cannot enter heaven because their bodies are corrupt. We also see a few verses back that St. Paul calls the flesh sinful too. In verses 3 through 4, quote, But what the, for what the law, weakened by the flesh, was powerless to do, this God has done by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for the sake of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the righteous decree of the law might be fulfilled in us, who live not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Now actually, to tie this back to the Immaculate Conception, the only possible way that Mary's body could also be in heaven is if her body 
was not under corruption that was a consequence of original sin or she was blameless at that very moment Revelation chapter 11 verse 19 quote then God's temple in heaven was opened and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple there were flashes of lightning rumblings and peals of thunder an earthquake and a violent hailstorm now what is so important about this verse well this is exactly one verse before Revelation chapter 12 verse 1 which states that quote a great sign appeared in the sky a woman clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet and on her head a crown of 12 stars also remember that there were no such things as chapters in the early manuscripts so these are a logical sequence of events we see that right after the ark of God's covenant is seen that the woman appears what is so important about this connection then the answer is in the book of Psalms, chapter 132, verse 8, which states, quote, Arise, Lord, come to your resting place, you and your mighty ark. Now that I have given a biblical basis and proof for the dogma of the Assumption of Mary, let us look now at what the church fathers or even later figures have to say. St. Ephraim the Syrian, Hymns on the Nativity, Hymn number 11, A.D. 370, quote, The Son of the Most High came and dwelt in me, and I became his mother, and as by a second birth I brought him forth, so did he bring me forth by the second birth, because he put his mother's garments on, she clothed her body with his glory. St. Gregory of Tours, First Book of Miracles, Chapter 1, Number 4, A.D. 575, quote, At dawn the apostles lifted her body on a bed, placed it in a tomb, and kept guard over it, in the anticipation of the arrival of the Lord. And behold again, the Lord approached them. He took the holy body in a cloud and ordered it to be brought to paradise, where after regaining her soul, Mary now rejoices with his elect, and enjoys the goodness of eternity that will never perish. St. John Damascene, homily 2, on the Assumption, around the 8th century AD. Why do you seek in the tomb one who has been assumed to the heavenly courts? Why do you make me responsible for not keeping her? I was powerless to go against the divine commands. That sacred and holy body, leaving the winding sheet behind, filled me full of sweet fragrance, sanctified me by its contact, and fulfilled the divine scene, scheme, and was then assumed, angels and archangels, and all the heavenly powers escorting it. St. Robert Bellarmine, Conciones Habite Lovanii, number 40, De Assumption, Assumption B. Marie Virginis, A.D. 1615, quote, And who, I ask, could believe that the Ark of Holiness, the dwelling place of the Word of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit, could be reduced to ruin? My soul is filled with horror at the thought that this virginal flesh, which had begotten God, had brought him into the world, had nourished and carried him, could have been turned into ashes or given over to be the food of worms. St. Alphonsus Liguori, The Glories of Mary, Part 2, Discourse 1 on the Immaculate Conception, A.D. 1750. Quote, the Holy Spirit says that the honor of the Father is the glory of the Son, and the dishonor of the Father is the sh shame of the Son. And St. Augustine says that Jesus preserved the body of Mary from being corrupted after death, since it would have dishonored honored him if corruption had destroyed that virginal flesh from which he had clothed himself to summarize based on both scripture and with what the church has had to say for centuries we can conclude that mary was indeed assumed body and soul into heaven at the end of her earthly life all right everyone please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you will get notified when i post future videos and comment down below on any new videos you want me to make and or any critiques that you have of this video and that's all for today see you next time